Welcome everyone. Today my session is about the classification of business organizations. You can see uh, the organization, business organization so far, like we talk about the needs and wants, important like you no know, business concept. We talk about the factors of production. So this is about the classification, how in the business world we can classify our business organization. So this lesson is all about the classification. You can see uh, we're talking about the uh, primary, secondary, tertiary. That's the main three classifications three different sectors. We're talking about these three different sectors today. What is primary, the definition, example, and what is secondary sector, the definition and example, and the tertiary sector, definition and example. And also, we're going to understand the changes in these different sectors over the time, right? But if you go to the past paper, sometimes we can find out some, there are some fourth sectors available, we call quaternary sector. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and coordinate is another fourth sector also available in past papers. You see, so today I'm explaining that as well. Uh, you can see in business organizations, like you know, businesses operate in different sectors in developed countries, such as the in developed countries like US, German, and also they are provide services, uh, maybe uh, you can see mainly like a service sector, which like fitness, fitness centers, insurance brokers, retailers, and everything, and market research, uh, IT support, this kind of a thing. In some countries like China, there are a large number of manufacturing sectors, like especially Chinese. Uh, you know, there are like we call the factory of Asia, is China. Like, and also uh, the finally, the less developed countries, uh, right? You can see like African countries, some of the Asian countries, you can see many businesses will concentrate on mainly agricultural products. Mm, including Sri Lanka, so you can see mainly we, our uh, main business lines go with the agricultural, we have like a paddy fields tea estates, rubber estate, coconut estates, uh, and agriculture, vegetable uh, growing, cultivation. These are the main functions that we are doing. But if you go to the developed countries, uh, they also have some agricultural lands fields, but their economy, the major, major contribution for the economy is the service sector, not the agriculture. Because when the country develop, uh, the agricultural contribution will go down. The service sector will be become the largest sector. So you can see these two, four pictures. Uh, you can see you can see the rail transport in India, right? You can see the picture like in the, in the top of the train also. You can see the people are going, but we can never see this kind of situation in developed countries uh, like USA, like Japan. We can't see this kind of situation because this is in, the resources are lack in these countries. You can see there are so much of population transport, but the available transport method, the medium is not sufficient. Scarcity problem also we can find out out of this picture. And growing crops in Africa, agricultural field, you can see how they try to you know, they water everything and then this sometimes soil, the fertilizer, everything. And the other one, food processing. You can see this the uh, like biscuit production at the top of the biscuit, you can see some kind of like a small jam, dot of jam or small like a jelly. And then uh, design, app design for smartphones. Like that. So we can, these are these four different sectors you can see we can see this is primary sector this is secondary sector this is uh, right the tertiary sector transportation and finally this is a uh, app development it support we call quaternary sectors it sector right so organizations when you are doing business when you're starting a business organization you have to find out what is the business that you're going to start and that start the business concept is falling under what category so by looking at these pictures, you can see which of the business shown on the previous uh, page are concerned with the agriculture, manufacturing and services. I think already I discussed that part. So first picture is all about the transportation comes under service sector, provision of service, transportation. Second one is all about the agriculture. Third one is manufacturing or secondary sector. That is converting raw materials into finished and semi-finished good. And this is the quaternary sector, IT support system. So mainly, and they're asking, uh, the second question they're asking, which of these businesses are most likely to employ a large number of people in a developing nation? Large number of people, so you can see most of the time, like developing nations. Uh, yeah, I think, yes. Number two, they say some agricultural sector, it's also secondary sector, that's why in developing countries, a lot of people are involving in the uh, manufacturing and agriculturing works. That's why a uh, large number of people are working there. And also, um, Let's go to the primary sector first of all. The primary mean the definition we can find out the definition together. Production involving the extraction of raw materials from the earth. Production involving the extraction of raw materials from the earth. We call primary uh, sector or primary industry. 
So it includes uh, some example, you can see agriculture, fishing, forestry, mining and quarry. Agriculture means like everything, like range of farming activities. It can be uh, like, you know, agriculture, like, like a farming of the vegetables, uh, so it can be a fruit seller, it can be a uh, like a corn farm, it can be a paddy field, like that. So different, it can be flowers, né? it can be tea estate, rubber estate, coconut estate, or nursery of plants, even tropical fish. Like this is normally in aquariums and everything, that's an agricultural mean, most range of farming activities is probably the most important primary sector activity in the most countries. Most agriculture is concerned with the food production. However, other examples include the decorative exotic products such as cut flowers, nursery plants, and tropical fish, uh, like that. So some people are like to actually say right, flowers, fresh flowers. They sometimes gardening, and also tropical fish for aquariums and home. Yeah, like goldfish and everything. That's also part of the agriculture. The next part is the fishing, uh, because fish ma fish market you can see in the like a river. You can fish on river. You can fishing. You can do a sea, involving netting trapping, angling, and trawling for fish. So whatever the method they are used to catch the fish, the fishing goes under primary sector because the fish goes from coming from the natural environment, the, from the nature. So if you catch those fish for our consumption, if we are using whatever the method we are used to uh, catch them, right, it can be a net, it can be trap, it can be angling, trawling, using boats, small scale or large scale or medium scale, whatever it is, it's called fishing belongs to primary sector. We call the fisherman. So catching, gathering other types of seafood, such as a mussel you know, and also prawns, lobster, crabs, scallops, oysters, everything, not only, you know, fish mean there's a wide range of fish available, right? Including, uh, it can be uh, prawns, it can be lobsters. So sometimes, you know, you can see, you can find the prawns and everything, lobster in lagoon, right? Uh, some crabs, you can find it, you know, some lagoons. So anyway, there are some artificial lagoons also they have created because of the people in order to like, you know, um, like harvesting them, like prawn farms we can see and uh, like uh, sh uh, shrimps are there like that, shrimp farming is there in lagoons and also like that. So China is the world's largest fish producer. You can see the billion, 1.2 billion population. Uh, from them we can see and there's a large sea area. So they're the one who actually world's largest fish producer in the world. That's for the extra knowledge, right? Another one is a uh, forestry, right? Forestry also like we are using for consumption basis because we need timber. We need timber for our uh, furniture. Furniture manufacturing comes under secondary, but the, if you the tree cutting, the timber production manufacturing, the if you cut down the trees, which come from the nature, it belongs to the primary sector. It involves managing forest to provide the timber for wood products. Uh, and modern forestry also involves protecting the natural environment, providing access and facilities to the public and managing areas for wildlife. So everything, even the uh, managing areas of wildlife. From Sri Lanka also we have very nice uh, biodiversity areas are there, like forestry, like we call forest ranges are there. We talk about the Yala, Vilpattu, Vasgamua, uh, Singharaja Forest. Some there are so many, sometimes national, you know, uh, those are reserves. So you can't go and cut the trees, right? But most of the you know areas are there, like normally, uh, their people are using for the timber for the wood production. But some areas are untouched areas because it's some kind of world heritage. Example, talk about Sri Lankan the world heritage, Singharaja forest, have a lot of biodiversity, like looks like Amazon forest. So it was a world heritage. So then in that jungle, you can't actually that forest you cannot cut down trees. But even though if you actually uh, like accessing to them, facilitating to the public, right, and managing areas that also belongs to forestry, right? So that's also part of the primary sector because you're selling your natural resources. Like people are coming and then you're accessing the facilities to the public uh, by providing access to the facilities. So you can go and you can see animals like safaris and everything you can organize, everything that comes under public and managing areas for like wildlife uh, that belongs to primary sector. Okay, and the primary, the last one is the mining and quarry. That also you can see some uh, natural resources. So you can see, like in you know, agriculture, if you uh, plant a mango tree, you can take the mango. So that comes uh, like top of the, you know, like it, it's visible. But some actually, some natural resources are invisible. It's, they are hidden under the soil. So therefore, we have to mine it. We have to take it out, like gem. Ne? Like, you know, Sri Lanka is very popular for Sri Lankan gems. 
uh, we are exporting like you know blue sapphire is very expensive uh, like different gem market is there sri lanka uh, like recently they found the world's largest gem from sri lanka so and extracting quarrying things are coming up like minerals some resources you can see like uh, the mineral like graphite uh, and phosphate ilmenite ne? rutile the like chemicals like we need sometimes they are in, hidden in the soil so we had to mine and we had to go to the, their quarries are there so like that so in the mining and everything uh, you can see the mining also comes under primary sector there are people who are extracting raw materials such as coal iron copper tin salt limestone from the ground and this sector also include the extraction of oil gas like that but you know uh, that's basically the oil and gas you know the regional wise world dominated by the middle east countries especially saudi aramco the saudi arabia and all gulf countries we call the uh, opec countries organization of petroleum exporting countries saudi aramco is the largest oil producer in the world in as an example of business that extract oil yes so per day the millions of barrels coming right because uh, that's why they are the one major like a, even us also and china also there are some uh, oil exploration companies are there but saudi arabia the gulf countries are the main uh, the economic power of the country comes from the oil and gas right they don't have any other you know like a you know, natural resources like a forest like us but they have most expensive resource called oil crude oil and the gas Yes, sir. So we have to import those items because uh, every country is not uh, fulfilled with all the resources. We have gem, we have uh, other resources, we have timber, everything, forest animals. But in Saudi, it's a desert country. Saudi, Dubai, Oman, Kuwait, Bahrain. Uh, uh, you can see all these countries are deserted countries. But under the desert, we have a like a gold is there inside. It's gold, sometimes gold reserve, sometimes gas, natural gas. right like doha kata if take the worst like a uh, so much of gas reserves are there in doha kata and like saudi aramco company can see the crude oil largest oil producer in the world uh, so according to this book we can see these are the example of the agricultural thing agriculture including farming fishing agriculture mining and quarrying so examples must be you should know so i think you can understand the primary means extraction of the raw materials from the first first you say right Okay, we are moving on to the second sector that is called the secondary secondary sector. Uh, it's easy definition we have the production involves conversion of raw materials into finished and semi finished goods. Easy definition production involving conversion of raw materials into finished and semi finished goods. Finished and semi finished. So finished good means totally finished. No need to convert again. Finished good. Semi finished means half half done, right? For example, if we talk about the the conversion of the raw materials, let's say we take the timber. Uh, if we cut down the trees, that's called primary. Timber is primary, but in secondary sector, we can actually cut the timber into like a pieces of uh, wooden, like called milling, and we can actually nicely we can uh, we can grind it and we can make some kind of a timber, like you know a wooden uh, log. We can create it into a timber, like a pieces, we can pieces pieces. We can actually. cut it down and we can get ready for we call that like timber corporation the com timber this comes under uh, semi finished good because timber even we cannot use the timber we have to convert the timber into finished good again that mean we have to cut it down we have to drill it we have to like mold it uh, we have to polish it we have to apply some kind of color it and then sometimes wood preservative and then only we can get some kind of a furniture like you know bed it can be a cupboard it can be a chair table stool right every like you no know, timber whatever the like some sometimes they are using timber for uh, roofing right for building construction for sometimes timber wooden floors they have used so like that that kind of a, right if you have a make a like a imagine like a, a sofa out of the timber or if you make a table out of timber we call it finished good that we can directly consume it right you can see there are two methods of the uh, second sector the conversion of raw materials into finished good or semi finished good So in the secondary sector, the business activity is involving converting raw materials into finished or semi-finished goods. That's the definition. All of manufacturing, processing, and construction lie within this sector, right? So all the construction firms are goes under lies under this sector. Secondary sector, business activities include metal working, car production, textile production, chemical and engineering industries. There are so many. You can see the different metal working. vehicle car manufacturing like toyota you can see textile production garment factories 
chemical processing, uh, engineering industries, aerospace manufacturing, like manufacturing helicopters and you know, jets and planes, like Boeing you know, company, energy utilities manufacturing, like uh, like energy utilities, you can see like uh, uh, solar power, solar panels, sometimes uh, uh, like you know, motors and engines, engineering, food processing companies, food processing, you know, like if you take the fish from the sea, and if you use a tin, that item, tin fish or canned fish, the canning process we call the secondary, right? So even food dose images are mango or whatever the fruit, we can see the canned fruits. Canned fruit industry comes under food processing, right? If you talk about just fruits, it goes to primary, just fish, it goes to, raw well, fish goes to primary. But if you can the fish, tin fish item, that goes to secondary because the food, they you process it. You give some another name, another, uh, like uh, you convert the, the natural resources into another form, tin fish or canned fish, canned food. Like that. So that's called the processing company that comes, comes under uh, secondary sector. Construction or shipbuilding. There are so many examples you can see construction, building construction, housing construction, apartment, bridge construction, and shipbuilding. Shipbuilding. You know, some shipping companies are there like Sri Lankan, we have like a Ceylon dockyard. They are making building construction ships. Uh, so this everything comes under uh, manufacturing sector. Normally, uh, this is like a second largest sector in a uh, lot of economies. Like a lot of people are nowadays working in the service sector, but second largest sector. That's why the primary sector becomes the, like a gradually dropping. But secondary sector uh, is the second always the people sector because we have to have these industries. Without these industries, you know, the, the sectors is difficult to because processing is really important. Like bakery also comes under secondary, like, you know, we have to take the corn, the flour, and then after that, the flour, we have to process into the breads, the processing parts happening in the bakery sector, secondary sector. Some businesses focus on the production of semi-finished goods, sometimes called the intermediate goods or producer goods. These goods are sold to other businesses and used as inputs for the production of final goods, which are then sold to consumers. For example, semi-finished goods might include the parts used in the assembly plant to make motor cars, steering wheels, car seats, brakes, light fittings, engine, electric cables, switching mechanisms, exhaust system, like that. So single car may use around 30,000 different parts in assembly. So if you work there, for example, if you're a company who makes steering wheels, so steering wheel company, uh, actually they're providing the steering wheels for the Toyota. So steering wheel company, they're producing what? Not finished good. They're producing semi-finished good, right? If you're making, let's say the battery uh, or car seat, we are manufacturing car seat. So car seat company comes under secondary uh, semi-finished good producer. Like that, if you take a single, like a output, like now finished good, like a vehicle or Jeep, you can break down the, into 30,000 different parts, like a doors, handles, spare parts, everything, the nuts and bolts, everything, battery, uh, uh, cables, wires, everything into 30,000 different parts in assembly. Amazing, right? So they've been vehicle means including 30,000 different parts together, they assemble, then only they can get out, then we can transport, right? So in many developed countries, the secondary sector has declined in recent years. That also is there. This is discussed more in detail below. All right, that's also keep in mind. Secondary sector also a lot of people are not involving in these sectors because it's difficult. Uh, and with the education level increase, there are more attractive opportunities coming from the third sector. That's why I'm talking now the most important, uh, most popular sector out of these three, the tertiary sector, tertiary. The tertiary sector always we, we call simple definition, the production of services in the economy, the production of services in the economy. So there are so many services are there. That's why a lot of educated people are involved in the service sector. Imagine, let's say you name one of the job that you want to do in future. Let's say sometimes, sometimes you might tell, okay, so I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an accountant. I want to be a pilot. I want to be a, a businessman. I want to be a uh, scientists, right? Sometimes different, different, uh, right? Ambitious ambitions might be have, but have you ever a concern that your working future, that is your ambition is based on tertiary sector, right? 
normally 100% people like every year i'm asking this question but everyone actually giving the total most of the people have they like to be the work in the tertiary sector right sometimes random learn some people are saying sir i want to be a, a farm like a farmer like a state owner i want to be a landlord i want to be a owner of a fishing company i want to be like a forest ranger very few people very few sometimes no zero right some people there's like so no one want to be a machine operator no one want to be actually person who are working in the factory because of the education level always they are pushing the education go up to the top of the organization though a lot of people they want to do business management uh, some accountancy degrees marketing degree courses um, right airline industry different industries hospitality so everyone working out of this one service sector it can be commercial service like call freight delivery debt collection printing employment agencies everything and financial service sometimes banking insurance company investment advice like soft stock broker uh, share market and pensions and also household services sometimes plumbing decorating gardening house maintenance right so that kind of a household service there are so many services are there uh, and also leisure services uh, television tourism hotel library is a service sector industry so a lot of people you can see they are finding jobs in these sectors either leisure either professional services someone want to be accountants lawyers legal advice and doctors medical care like and sometimes transport sector when right? people operate train taxi service taxi business bus drivers right? bus services air services like pilot right? these are the main services you can see leisure service professional services transport services household services so you know the meaning of the service sector provision of service is a tertiary and there are different services are there commercial service financial service household service leisure service professional service and transport transport and logistic so everything comes under service sector so when the country develop so most of the people are used to work in the tertiary sector uh, in the business organization i would like to actually take you to the uh, my handout you can see the tertiary primary secondary tertiary sector i gave it the examples primary secondary tertiary and there's another one called coordinate that one also i'll explain right now primary sector definition we can see the example like you not know, taking the natural resources everything same way secondary sector manufacturing and assembly converting raw materials into components finished or semi finished good tertiary sector refers to commercial services like uh, provision of services insurance transport logistic we talk about right now leisure everything and they in past paper question there was the sector in mcq question was there they gave this word called quaternary sector quaternary sector means the fourth sector which is called ict it support services like the digital economy is now digitalizing online banking online teaching online uh, you know everything goes online right now so the, we need software developers we need ict a technology consultants who give advices research and development so everything which actually based on ict which comes under quaternary sector app developer website developers uh, like social media uh, marketing so everything comes under quaternary sector which is comes under like you know provision of the it sector it support systems it support services comes under quaternary sector so if you think that if you want to be a like a future software engineer which means that uh, that program or something you are working under quaternary or falling under quaternary sector that to keep in mind that's uh, another thing since so i have interdependence with each other every sector have interdependence of each other for example let's say take the primary sector this corn farming so then primary sector corn farming they are going to this corn goes to secondary sector manufacturing they they convert in flour and then they manufacturing breads or cakes out of this and these cakes are then after that they are going to sell it in the store supermarket or retail outlet so retail outlets comes under falls under tertiary sector that's why interdependence is there so if there's no farmers there is no agriculture production there's there is no input there is no raw materials for the secondary sector when there is raw materials there is no raw materials no output no breads and the stores has to be close right no bakery so everything interdependent if one item shop mean then it happened is definitely have impact on the second sector and the second sector have impact on the third sector have everything interdependent i have given the examples also of a farming you can see fishing farming forestry mining querying everything 
sugar, rice, sugar cane, grains, spices, uh, spices, vegetables, fruits, tea, rubber, coconut, milk, eggs, everything. Okay? Chicken, beef, pork, everything. Second sector, you can see uh, everything belongs to the conversion of raw materials into finished or semi finished transformation, building houses, computer assembly, baking breads, production of textile, everything. Uh, so examples are given telecommunication, insurance, banking, like you no know, uh, shipping, shipbuilding, right? And also textile manufacturing, cement manufacturing, petroleum, refineries, uh, like that. Tertiary sector, I have given examples, all the provision of services, uh, also provision of transportation, communication, facilities, everything. So tertiary sector jobs, we normally call white collar jobs, right? So example for tertiary sector jobs, we call transportation, retailing, tourism, leisure, banking, hairdressing, right? Okay, some small activities there right now. So I'll ask one by one where you can answer this question. You can use the uh, chat line also send the answer. Uh, the first question I'm asking from Rumika, tell me, uh, uh, insurance comes under which sector? Insurance can, falls under which sector? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Yes. Yes, the answers are correct. A lot of people say, yeah, yeah type me from the, this one. Yes, this comes under tertiary sector. Yes, I got three answers. All answers are correct. Very good. Okay, forestry comes under which section? Forestry. I'm asking this from Oshan. Forestry. Forestry comes under? Yes, I got very, a lot of answers coming through the chat line. Yes, forestry comes under primary sector. Okay, coal mining. Coal mining comes under which sector? Mining, mining. Remember, mining comes under primary, primary sector, right? Take the natural resources out. Coal mining also primary sector. Yes, answers are correct, right? Very good. And uh, compute assembly. Compute assembling comes under assembling. Assembling comes under uh, some answers wrong. This case comes under compute assembly comes under falls under secondary. They are converting, right? construction, manufacturing. Travel agent, travel agent comes under you know, tourism, everything. Tourism falls under tertiary service sector. CNN television, media, media falls under tertiary sector. Hmm? Car showroom, car showrooms comes under tertiary sector. MS, MS is a government fact, Sri Lankan, very popular Sri Lankan, you know, the main uh, the sponsor for Sri Lankan cricket. Uh, MS Holdings is a government factory, falls under secondary sector. Nike sportswear, Nike sportswear manufacturing comes under secondary, uh, selling comes under, showrooms comes under tertiary. All right, so this is the answer for second question number, uh, this is activity, small activity. Okay, let's move on to the uh, activities in the uh, chapter. You can see here the first activity, agricultural employment. Agricultural employment, uh, so I'll invite uh, Rumika, can you read that case study? Case study agricultural employment. The largest olive growing region in the world is Andalusia, southern Spain. Many of the growers in this region are owned and run by small family uh, businesses. The, the Casillas fa family grow olives on their farm near Cardoba. Each year they sell their harvest to a local business which process to process the olives into oil, much of which is exported. Harvest time between November and March is a very busy time for the family. The usual employ about 15 villagers to help out. However, Marco Casillas has recently thought about investing in some harvesting machinery to reduce labor costs and remain Yeah, so you can see here the the case study. Uh, mainly, there, there are so many. The harvest this comes from the family business actually in Spain, and this uh, the family business have actually exporting the olive. This olive oil is very expensive. You can see the olive harvest, and they are exporting the olive harvest into other countries. You can see even Sri Lanka is very expensive. The best oil that you can consume is the olive oil. So a lot of doctors also say this is because very cholesterol. Uh, free, like very, the cholesterol is limited. If you take the coconut oil, there are a lot of uh, uh, cholesterol is there. But olive oil is really good for the heart. It's very, uh, very expensive, but it's really good. 
most expensive items like uh, good no right so you can see that's why like not like the uh, um, other oils like not like sunflower oil not like uh, coconut oil not like the uh, palm oil right olive oil is the best out of the oil range if you want to actually use for the right i think uh, for consumption use the olive oil that's the best as well a lot of countries even france a lot of european country they are using olive oil uh, and a lot of is so exporting and harvest time between the november and march is very busy time for the family these are uh, usually uh, they employ about 15 villagers to help out uh, however the marco is a cassis class and has uh, recently uh, thought about the investing some of the harvesting machinery to reduce the labor cost you can see here because of the machines and everything using the labor actually uh, going down you can see this is agricultural employment uh, agricultural employment chart from 2019 1980 to 2010 you can see like this is uh, right about period of 30 years three decades uh, now 80s 90 and now you can see you can see agricultural employment going down falling why this happened because of the lot of those days we need lot of people who work in agricultural farm lands Uh, but now you can see percentage wise, but twenty percent, and then when it come to the nineteen ninety two after ten years, it falls to ten percent, and after one year it come to two thousand ten, it falls to five percent, less than five percent. That's how situation goes on. A lot of people are nowadays they are not like to work in the like a farm land because it's a very hot in climate and uh, dirty and sometimes difficult working conditions, sometimes dangerous working conditions are there. People are easily, and also the education level also has increased. People are working some other sector, ne? jobs in other sector. That's a situation called the fall in agricultural sector. They are asking uh, three question out of this. What is the difference between primary and the secondary sectors? Use example from this case study. The primary sector, you know, the definitions wise, uh, extracting raw materials from the na nature, uh, whereas secondary means uh, converting, converting the uh, goods into Finish or semi-finished goods. So in the example, you can see like this is farming. Everything olive oil is coming under the primary sector, and manufacturing of the making oil out of the olive oil, olive seeds, that comes under uh, secondary sector. Yes, I, I can see some answer. Yeah, the picking the olives comes under yes, uh, primary sector, and making olive oil out of the olive seeds as comes under secondary sector. You'll see the marking scheme answer for this. Uh, He says that the uh, farmers work growing crops are examples of the business involved in agriculture. So in this case, it's using the land to grow product produces. The business producing food is a farm manufacturer that is making products. Both the railway company and the app design. So they said getting started question. So let's go to our activity here. Uh, activity number one: agricultural employment. Look at this application here. They ask me what's the difference between primary sector and secondary sector. In the primary sector, business activity involves extracting raw materials from the earth. In this case, that's application. I always say when you're writing some application point, you can use the in this case word in your answer. So in this case, olive growing by the uh, Casillas family is an example of farming. Olive growing, and farming is probably the most important primary sector activity. They say farming is the most important primary sector activity. Uh, most countries most agriculture is concerned with the food production like olive growing in this example and the second sector secondary sector encompasses the manufacturing and processing so in this case olives are being processed into olive oil olive oil machinery is likely to be used to squeeze the oil from the olives this might be uh, followed by a cleaning process to ensure that the olive is uh, is sufficiently pure So that's why that's the diff difference between the uh, primary and secondary from the question the case study says mention this is the primary sector growing and cultivating olive trees and taking the olive oil and making the olive oil because the machinery is there so you have to get that you have to squeeze the olive oil from the this olive seeds and you have to cleansing it you can see the cleaning up process there is some kind of a, like a case like a uh, like mesh is there steel mesh this olive oil the after they squeeze it from the this uh, seeds they go through on another process of called cleaning part so this filter is there uh right the some metal filter so when the olive oil will be coming go through the filtering process then that is 100% pure after that there is no uh, like a 
subs uh, like other other contents are not there so everything filtered out so this is how to go to market sometimes it's a one milliliter 100 milliliter bottle will be uh, worth like in much like Sri Lankan rupees about thousand two thousand rupees right so a bottle of one liter which will cost around seven thousand ten thousand rupees it's like that so but compared to the other coconut oil and everything this is 10 times expensive 10 times 15 times expensive right Okay, and the second question you see the second question this question asking look at the figure 7.1 that the uh, asking what has happened to the number of people employed in the agriculture in Spain since 1980s. Definitely you can say it's gone down. Everyone can understand it's gone down. According to the Spain, like many countries, number of people employed in agriculture is falling. The graph shows that the number of people employed in agriculture has fallen from around 19% from 1980s. Uh, just under 5% in 2010. It's so like that, you can say. So if they, yeah. Yeah, some one question asking us, uh, yes, they said, if they use machines to pick the olives, will, they, uh, will it be primary or secondary? In the uh, olive process, in the olive farm, if you take some machines to pick the olives, mean that is still primary. The problem is they replace the labor by capital. That's the thing. So we use machinery that falls on the capital. So that is not actually, you can't change the sector because you are using machine. In a lot of agricultural sector, you are using machine. Even fishing, we are using machines, right? Some fisher, fishermen, they are using some machine like trawling, netting and everything. Even like in the agriculture, like forestry industry also, we, we are using some machines like, you know, like uh, uh, people are using some kind of a, uh, like a saw and everything, yeah, electric, you know, uh, you know, the machine saw and everything to cut down the trees. So anyway, in the oil, if you collect some machines to take the uh, oil, the oil you see, that's still primary sector. And machine again, we are using to squeeze the oil from the seed. That's a secondary sector. That's why. Okay. Uh, so you can see, you can see the percentage by how it fall, 19% and then 5%. You can see that how we calculate that figure. You can see from uh, this figure, if you indicated that from 20% goes down to 1992 is 10%. And then from after that, now you can see it's 5%. If you actually take the percentage wise, uh, it's actually, it was, uh, they mentioned in the answer, it was about 19% in the 1980s. And then you can see after that, around 19% in 1980s. And after that, what happened in 2000, it's just under 5%. Just under 5%. So you're giving the the percentage changes happened by using the link in this one around 19% in 1980s. In 2010, after three decades, it falls under 5%. You can see. Right? In 1980s, if you go, we can find out out of the total population, 20% are farmers who are working in the farmlands. But now in 2010, like about 10 years ago, if you take the 100 people, only five, less than five people are farmers. True, no? Right, the scenario you can see will clarify so we can understand what happened to the agricultural sector. Okay, the third question they're asking describe the one possible reason for this pattern in question two. Why possible reason? Like I just told you, one reason should be the uh, increase the level of education. Everyone become very ill educated. So I'm not saying that there is no uh, educated farmers. There are some educated farmers, right? The people who go to university and become farmers. That's a very uh, small numbers like that, but most of the time when people get educated, so education also like uh, mainly shifting towards the uh, non-agricultural sectors like science, technology, and engineering, commerce, arts like that. So if you have a degree or qualification towards the non-agricultural field, definitely you are not coming back to agriculture, right? And other thing is the people also you can see replaced by machine. So another one of the reason is industrialization. You can see industrialization, like when the, the humans, the manpower replaced by machine powers, then uh, the work actually, the number of workers uh, we need to require it reduced because 10 people work can replace by one tractor, right? Or one mechanical harvester, right? We need 20 people so far in 1980s. Now, a lot of tractors, mechanic gadgets, uh, mechanical harvesters, uh, and uh, like a grain drying machines and you know so many now well equipped so many machines and harvesting machines are there so as a result now we need only less than five workers in a uh, factory in a government uh, primary sector so we just talk about this answer properly main reason for the falling in this situation say 
one of the main reason why employment in agriculture has fallen in Spain so sharply is because advances in the technology, yes, industrialization. Before in around the 1980s, farmers may have relied more uh, heavily on labor. However, because of the growing availability on, or of affordable technology, they may employ more machines. More machines, it's evidence is there in the case study. Development in technology have been enormous in agriculture, right, enormous in agriculture. In this case, using the context again, Marco Casillas is considering the purchase of some harvesting machinery to reduce the labor cost and remain competitive. That's everyone doing, even me and you also same because we're talking about the profit. So if you want to get more profit, so you're going to the best option, right? Because we talk about, I think my previous session in labor intensive, capital intensive, uh, capital is very easy to manage than labor. Labor is difficult to manage. So a lot of people are thinking, okay, how should I replace my labor? If I can buy one tractor and I can do very faster without uh, doing it by, by using 10, 20 workers, I can do everything by using one tractor, one machine. Sometimes people might go for a bank loan and buy them their tractor, everything. So multi-purpose machines are there, so we can replace so much of labor. So that is there in so many countries. Uh, yeah, so you can see some one farmland in USA, like in Kansas uh, and everything, so corn farms and everything goes on. Uh, sometimes entire farmland is managed by one farmer, one man, right? He was some kind of a council, like so put in the fertilizer and everything, sometimes using drone. Sometimes using like, you know, uh, uh, a small, like a light planes are they are using with the fertilizer, they are spray out of the, like that way, large acres of land. So they have a pilot license. So you can actually take the small plane and then you can spray all the fertilizer with all the corn farm field, the pest, everything will be gone. And when it comes to harvesting time, there are some like a nice machine, like a, everything like one farmland, one or two employees is enough, tractor drivers are enough. Everything they're using drones, they're using planes, they're using a lot of you know harvesting machines and robotics sometimes. So that's why the, the need of labor gone down in developed countries. But developing countries still people are they are still using manpower. Sometimes animals, like you know, the buffaloes and cows they're using for the agriculture field. But developed countries, no, they are not harming animals. Right? So this is a situation like uh, once such machines have been purchased, the need for labor drops sharply, right? So that's the thing. Uh, so in my today's lesson, right, so